If you want to get started into cloud, so this video is for you. This is going to be an easy to follow step by step process for you to get started into cloud. You'll learn how to deploy a VPC and how to deploy an EC2. Don't know what a VPC or EC2? No problem. I got you covered. We're going to see all of these during this video. Now, there are three key requirements that you have to meet before we continue. First, you should have an active email account. Second, you should have an active phone number just to validate that you are really who you say you are. Third, and that might be the hardest one, you should have a way to pay for your services. But they need to validate that in case you overutilize the resources, you'll be able to pay them. Now, depending on your bank, you should be able to create virtual cards. And this way you can restrict or limit the amount that can be deducted from your card. Just a tip there. Okay, so with this out of the way, let's get started. Okay, let's begin by creating our AWS account. And here we're going to provide the email address. And at AWS account name, this is just going to be a name. So here we have to type, okay, let's say Silesio at email.com. And the account name should be something like Silesio account right and then you have to press verify email address and they you receive a link to validate your email okay then the next step they will ask you for the phone number and you have to validate also the phone number okay and later on you will have to add your card again just to validate that you really have funds in case you overutilize the resources in the cloud I already did all this process, so I'm just going to show you my dashboard. Once you have your account created, you should land on a dashboard like this. Uh, if it's a little bit different, that's not a problem. But the point that I want to make is that when you create your account initially, you won't have privilege to access all the resources that we're going to use. So it might take a couple of minutes or hours until AWS allows you to access all the resources. Okay. Now, in my case, I'm going to use uh, this region, Europe, Stockholm, because I'm in Europe. So depending on where you are, you might fall into a different region. So this is just something to pay attention to. Without getting too much details about regions, we just want to focus on deploying VPC and EC2. Now, what is a VPC? VPC stands for Virtual Private Cloud. It's like building your own office your own place in the cloud in aws cloud and this is the main thing that you need whenever you're deploying a cloud infrastructure as i said this is going to be in an easy to follow and step-by-step -step process so let's just get right into vpc so we'll click here on services and we'll navigate to networking and content delivery and we're going to select vpc isolated cloud services and here we're going to create a VPC. Okay, we want to build our own office on cloud. So we're going to select VPC only because this has to be as easy to follow as possible. And we're going to name it as XPY. So that's the name I'm going to use, uh, VPC, okay? Now the IPv4 side of the block, this will be the subnet range that we're going to use. So in our example, let's just pick 192.168.0.0.16, okay? We're not going to use IPv6, we're going to leave tenancy as default and we're just going to create the VPC. And congratulations, we just created our VPC. Now, there are a couple of things that we have to understand about VPC. Now, if I select VPC, okay, what do we have? So we have the CIDA block, that's the main subnet range that we're going to use for this VPC. And we also have, let's see, route tables. So route tables, they act like the routing table in routers or switch devices. So this is a way to say, if we, I want to get to a specific destination, choose this next hop. Now, if you look at details and routes, okay, in case we have to reach an IP in this range, so it means that the target will be local. Okay. I'm just going to change this name to be easier to identify and I'm going to name it as XPYs. That's the main table and default one. And I'm just going to use RT at the end 
uh, that will tell me this is a route table and let's save this so just update what we also have by default are network acls and network acls they are used to filter the traffic on subnets in this case we're just going to update the name as well and we'll name it as uh, xpys um default network acl okay and let's save this and we also have security groups now security groups they apply the rules just like a firewall okay but at the vpc level so network acls they apply at subnet and security groups they apply at the vpc level in this case i'm just going to update the name as well that's going to be xpys and that's going to be default security group okay so we have vpc we have network acls and we have security groups that's great by default these are the resources that we have but we need to create additional resources to make this vpc functional now we're going to subnets okay we're going to create a subnet and select vpc as the name i'm going to type uh network so this is easier for me to identify that this object is a subnet and i want to select this range so we're going to select a range that is smaller than our main one and the availability zone we're going to leave as no preference the cider block so i'm going to paste here the cider block that i want to use okay and we're going to create the subnet okay the subnet was created awesome now when we create the server or the ec2 instance we will need that server to have internet access and we also have to reach that server from our home right so in this case we need another resource and that's the internet gateway so we go to internet gateways and we're going to create an internet gateway now we'll name it as xpys underscore igws to internet gateway and we're going to create the internet gateway now this internet gateway must be attached to our vpc so in actions we're going to select attach to vpc and we're going to select our vpc and attach internet gateway now this is done awesome so the internet gateway will be the link or the gateway between what we have inside vpc that needs to access the internet and also a way from us to reach our server or the instances that we have inside the VPC. Now, there is one thing missing. In order to access any resource in the cloud, recall this means in the internet, we need to reach through a public IP address. So our subnet must be tied to a public IP address. So if we go back to subnet, we have to go to actions so let me select the subnet actions and i want to edit subnet settings and we want to enable auto assign public ip34 address so we're going to enable and save now this means that this subnet will be assigned a public ip address now you're going to understand this in a moment so far we have a subnet that will be mapped to a public IPv4 address. We have an internet gateway that links what we have inside the VPC to outside the VPC, in this case to internet. Now we need to tell what we have inside the VPC to route all the traffic to that internet gateway. So we go to route tables and we're going to create a new route table and we're going to name it as XPYs and let's call it internet uh that's just route table so we know that this route table will lead to internet we're going to select the vpc that's our vpc and we're going to create the route table now this route table we're going to edit routes and we're going to add a new route you select the default one and we'll select the target to be our internet gateway and okay now it shows up and let's save the changes. What does it mean? It means that for any traffic that it's not related to this subnet, it will be sent to this address or to this range. So that's what we have as a default route. 
and the default gateway will be our internet gateway that will lead to the internet. Now we have to associate this route table with our subnet. So we click on subnet associations. We see that the current subnet is not associated with this route table. In this case, we're going to edit subnet association. We're going to select our subnet and we're going to save the association. Now, if we go back to subnet association, now we have our subnet is linked to this route table. Awesome. Now let's create our EC2 server or Windows server. So if we go to services and that should be compute EC2 virtual servers in cloud. Now let's launch an instance. Okay, here we're going to type the name for our instance and I'm going to name it as XPWise. Uh, and we're going to select the Windows server and that's going to be EC2. And we're going to select Windows Server. And that should be uh, eligible in the free tire. Recall that this is uh, the tire or the resource that we can use for free without being charged. And you have to generate a key pair. So we're going to create a new key pair and we're going to name it as XP, XPWise. And that's going to be Windows Server RSA. Okay, and I'm going to save this file. Okay, the key was created. Next, we're going to edit our network settings. So we'll be using our VPC and our subnet. And we're going to assign a public IPv4 address. Now, as for security group, we're going to create a new security group. And we'll name it as XPWise and internet uh, security group okay and let's just copy this name and also use it as the description and the rule will be to allow rdp as an inbound rule okay so we want to allow rdp to our windows server from any host okay so we're going to leave that and the outbound so we don't have to update the outbound we're going to leave the storage as default and i believe that's it okay so we can launch the instance okay and that shouldn't take long so it's creating all the resources we selected and our instance is ready our our server so if you go back to the status we should see that it's running and it's initializing which means the server is just booting if we click on this uh, we should see the public ip address assigned to our server and we should be able to reach our server through this IP. And recall, it has to be a remote desktop. We'll be able to do it once the status shows as pass. Okay, the status shows that it's okay. If we click on the server and let's connect to this server, and I want to log in using the RDP client, okay? Now we can download the remote desktop or we just copy the IP. The username is the administrator. And to get the password, we have to upload the private key we just downloaded before i'm going to upload my key file if you followed all the steps just the way i showed you you should be able to log on to your windows server and congratulations this was a big step for you i might be asking what now well you already know what a vpc is you already know what an ec2 is you know how to combine them what else can you do what about deploying an Ubuntu machine? What about deploying Netbox on cloud? What about deploying a Cisco router or a checkpoint firewall on cloud? What else can you discover? Now you already have the foundation and you could do something so easy such as installing Cisco packet traces on this Windows server. That should be a piece of cake, right? So that's a wrap for today. I hope you enjoyed this easy to follow step by step on cloud and i hope to see you on the next one